Hello everyone. Uh, this is Prashant Pandey from Right Management, welcoming you to this very interesting conversation today, uh, which is post-COVID-19 careers, getting ahead or getting left behind. Uh, this is a very interesting and uh, relevant conversation, we thought, uh, uh, because I am having a lot of conversations uh, uh, with leaders across industries, and uh, some of the uh, realizations that I've had uh, during uh, these interactions is that uh, consumer behaviors are going to change uh, uh, because of which uh, be it any industry, uh, the business models of those industries are going to change. Uh, one of the things that probably we all are realizing as we live through this lockdown period is that the way the work is getting done, that is undergoing a, a, a quite a bit of a transformation. Uh, one thing is sure, uh, that there is going to be a new normal once uh, this COVID thing gets over and uh, we get back to work. But the interesting thing is that uh, you know, when you talk to people in terms of what the contours of this new normal is going to be, probably it's a, it's a bit uh, uh, fuzzy still out there. A few things which are very certain uh, that everybody is speaking about is that uh, there's going to be an extra emphasis that every geography, every economy in the in the world is going to have uh, on localization. So, so globalization, the way we knew it, is probably going to undergo a change, at least for very critical things like pharmaceutical food. There's going to be extra emphasis that, uh, 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 you know, that uh, countries are going to have on localization. So that's a given. The second uh, 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 thing that everybody agrees on is that going to be a massive increase. An acceleration uh, on on robotics, autom automotive uh, investment, and AI development, and that is going to happen across sectors, not only manufacturing but across all sectors. And in that context, if that is a reality that everybody in general agrees to, uh, one of the uh, realizations is that probably some of the skills which are needed uh, uh, by organizations in the near future is going to undergo quite a bit of a change. Not only that. Probably the way the work is getting done, as I said earlier, uh, which we all are experiences is going to undergo quite a bit of a change. And in that context, the conversation that we are going to have today, which is, you know, individual professionals need to relook in terms of how they stay relevant in the days to come. Otherwise, the reality that either you get ahead or you get left behind is something that you cannot escape. Now, this conversation I thought would be a great conversation to have with a mix of professionals, mix of uh, voices which represent the industry as well as the academics. And that's why we have this wonderful panel with us today, whom I'm going to sort of uh, 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 reach out to and have a conversation uh, on, on this particular topic. So let me introduce the panelists uh, to you uh, today. So the first panelist that we have today uh, with us is, is Ms. Uh, Neeru Mehta, uh, who is the Vice President, People Development and Learning and Head of uh, India Region at Global Logic. Uh, Neeru has uh, 19 years of uh, diverse corporate experience in uh, organizations like HCL Technologies, Bedla Soft, and now, of course, at Global Logic. Uh, Neeru has spearheaded uh, global initiatives in talent management, performance coaching, org design, uh, and restructuring. Uh, done a lot of work in terms of HR, uh, uh, IT, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, Neeru also has a special interest uh, in professional coaching and takes a lot of interest in leadership and transition coaching. So uh, Neeru, welcome uh, to this conversation. Thank you for taking time out and having a conversation with us. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, Sandeep, Santosh, everyone, and all the participants who are viewing us right now. So I definitely look forward to this discussion. Thank you, Neeru. Uh, the second uh, uh, person who's representing the industry and from a completely different uh, uh, industry, which is uh, financial uh, services, is Mr. Sandeep Tomar Sarkar, who is the head of HR at Bharti Aksha General Insurance. Uh, Sandeep also has about 19 years of experience in IT, automotive, insurance industry, and has worked in top uh, organizations like HP, Tata Motors, and now, of course, at uh, Bharti Aksha General Insurance. Sandeep has involved, been involved in strategic planning, change management, and process automation for multiple uh, business units. Uh, he specializes 
specifically in recruitment and org development. And I think uh, his point of view is going to be of special, uh, of special interest to all of us. So thank you, Sandeep, for taking time out and coming onto this platform. Really uh, looking forward to hearing your views. Thank you very much for the invitation, and I look forward for the conversation today. Uh, I'm looking forward to taking away a lot of learning from uh, Professor Santosh and uh, Ms. Miu. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. Okay, and then, of course, not, uh, last but not the least, is Professor Santosh Sangame, who uh, represents the academia, and he's currently the Associate Dean of VIL programs at XLRI. Uh, Professor Sangam uh, has a PhD in economics from IIM Calcutta and has been a leading faculty at XLRI for over a decade now. Uh, he has held multiple roles at XLRI as chairperson of finance area and now associate dean at uh, VIL mm -hmm. program. Uh, Professor, really interested in hearing your views in terms of how do you look at uh, the whole reskilling and the skills which are going to be relevant in the corporate sector uh, today. So welcome and uh, thank you for taking time out for this conversation. Thank you, Prashant, Sunil, and Niru, and welcome to all the participants. And look forward to this being a engaging and a, and a session where even there are quite a few takeaways for us as well as academicians. So, Great. so let me yeah. So thank you, Santosh. Uh, uh, let me start by uh, coming to the corporate sector directly and pick your thoughts in terms of and give us a sense uh, Niru and Sandeep and probably I'll go to Niru first in terms of uh, how has business happening uh, at your end uh, in your industry in your organization uh, during this time of lo uh, lockdown how have you coped up to ensure business continuity how have you kept your employees engaged how have they been uh, delivering work so what's been your experiences and 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 uh, and realizations uh, during the six weeks of lockdown, ensuring business continuity and 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 that work continues. So, Niru, can we hear your thoughts first, and then I'll come to Sandeep. Sure. Um, so it's it's a very pertinent question, especially right now when you can you know I think all of us are are at home. Probably not Professor Sangam. I don't really know. <laughs> you know, he, his background makes me uh, feel that it's probably a college or you know a, a, one of those uh, setups. But yeah, you know. Um, so this normally, uh, if you know, almost all IT companies and all our organizations have a BCP plan. You know, that's that's something which is always there, part of the manuals part. But, uh, you know, the interesting part is that not even a single BCP plan across organizations was ready for this kind of pandemic. Because it wasn't about one location. It wasn't about one country. It was about the whole globe. So, you know, if we are present in 13 countries, it meant that all 13 countries go on BCP in, at one go. And that was true for all organizations. But I think what counted most was the agility with which it, which it happened. And uh, thankfully, the kind of business that we are in, almost 95% of our employees have their own laptops. So for us to shift to work from home, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, I won't say it was easy because we, you know, we did have that tricky part of the 5% where we had to, uh, you know, really uh, pick up equipments like TVs or or some of the client devices, you know, back there with all securities uh, regulations to be followed. But, uh, you know, I can tell you, Prashant, uh, we almost succeeded with 99.5% people working 100% from home. And, uh, you know, uh, then one was, you know, really getting to work from home. Second was, how is the productivity going? So, uh, you know, it, it's been like over four weeks now. And, uh, you know, our rate productivity overall has really gone up, especially when you, you know, pick up cities like Bangalore or even, you know, Delhi uh, NCR region. People really travel three to four hours. And, and you know, uh, something that, we, you know, I've started calling it's the time bonus that we got, you know, uh, in this lockdown period. Yeah. So I think, I think the productivity went up, uh, you know, although in, in some cases it's, there was a status quo, in some cases it really went up because people, people really saved a lot of time, although you know, they started working at home and, uh, you know, working, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of home stuff that went on as well. Uh, that was the second part. Now, employee engagement. Uh, so I think uh, the HR teams, the learning teams, the leadership teams, we all got together and said, how do we, you know, really uh, keep motivating our people or keep connecting? So what has happened is the rigor of meeting up has gone up. 
you know, in office, some things that you'll take for granted that, you know, you'll probably walk down the aisle and meet half your teams. You know, you, how do you, you know, make, uh, get that same rigor inside, you know, when you're not at work. So, you know, some very interesting, uh, you know, meetings with names like BYOC, you know, bring your own coffee, bring your own chai, or, you know, things like those where you're interacting with family or of the employees. We sort of stepped up the rigor on that. Uh, L&D teams, uh, you know, the way people have gone on to learning is amazing. You know, the the way the participation in all internal webinars and skilling is is really really good right now. So I think I think overall it's got managed well. We actually internally are discussing this is a case study with us right now. You know, this whole experience is a case study. Yeah. You know, we are experiencing, and once we come out of it, a lot of uh, you know policies and frameworks that we have will undergo a change, you know, and I didn't, not just, you know, at a global logic level, but at an industry level. So Sandeep, you know, uh, of course, you know, I'd like to hear from you also, you know, insurance, you know, because for IT, I think it was relatively easier to get into that mode. So great, right, you know, I think global logic clearly has uh, sort of done extremely well. Sandeep, your industry would be very different and the rules of the game uh, probably are very different. And, uh, you know, so how have uh, you coped up at uh, Bharti Aksa General Insurance? Really interested in hearing your uh, stories. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, we are in the risk industry. So we monitor each and every risk. So this is a big risk which was coming out. And we have been, uh, uh, as a team, uh, we all have been monitoring the risk which was uh, coming out from China and how the movements are happening. So we saw the first trend uh, coming out. Uh, we we do other than life, we do all all kind of uh, all all kind of insurance. So be it a uh, experiential, be it a product insurance, be it anything else. So other than life, uh, everything has been uh, everything can be insured. So so we were seeing uh, certain trends coming up in terms of travel, in terms of. Uh, uh logistical movements uh and so and so forth so we we could see certain amount of disturbance which is coming into the business and a certain numbers which are predominantly this is the peak season for any kind of travel and it was started the bookings and other things were started dripping in and, and that's when we realized that okay this may hit us very soon uh, and uh, as a precautionary measure we all did a bcp uh, for most of the locations a couple of days in advance uh, from before the uh, lockdown was announced here in Mumbai or any uh, and and rest of the country, um, as you all know, the uh, in uh, within India, uh, Mumbai is the one which is hit the maximum, and uh, we we tested it uh, once, and uh, thankfully uh, in last. Uh, uh, two two and a half years there is an overdrive in terms of automation in, in terms of uh, be it a customer experience or be it an employee experience so we have been driving automation like crazy and uh, th that is something which has helped us move within a flash uh, into a bcp mode uh yes we are a sales driven organization we have 80 percent of the population which is in a frontline sales so yes the challenge begins there what do you do when you have 80 percent people who do or get business through a handshake or, or a meeting people ac across the table. So that's where uh, um, we immediately kicked in a couple of interventions uh, for our team, which is uh, which hel had helped in terms of engagement also, in terms of how do we move them from a uh, uh, one to one sale to a uh, conversation over a call or a video conference and etc. So usually our lms uh, uptake has been nearly about 80 to 90 percent uh, this thing and uh, in this it is on an overdrive right now uh, everyone is clocking at least one and a half hour a day in terms of learning content and which is uh, for us it's becoming a challenge in terms of enriching the content and develop bringing in different new things together so, uh, so uh, this has been a overwhelming experience a great learning uh, it, do not though we don't uh, uh, we don't wish for this kind of eventuality but uh, this happens once in in anyone's lifetime and i'm sure the way we have seen um, things happen post uh, 2008 2009 uh, there are new set of uh, things which has emerged uh, and new ways of businesses emerged this will uh, teach us some more lessons uh, i'm i'm sure so that that's from my Great side and thank you so much Great. Uh, so let me come to Professor. So you heard uh, Sandeep mention, uh, Professor, that people, it seems to be slightly more hungrier today for knowledge than ever before. So tell me what's happening at XLRI in terms of how have uh, 
uh, how has the academic industry uh, you know coped up uh, with this uh, with these times and uh, how's action happening at your end and then probably we'll come to uh, all of you in terms of uh, picking up your thoughts in terms of uh, what's what does it mean from a skills perspective uh, uh, in the days to come so uh, professor all yours yeah uh, nice to hear from sandeep and neeru that things are quite a new that people are eager to learn right here at to be honest most education institutes across the world do not really think seriously about business continuity for some reason they have a feeling <laughs> yeah that right business will go on as usual but we saw when we realized that the signs are there in early march when we realized that we started drawing up our contingency plans for you know kind of shifting or shifting our regular students to the online platforms because there we had a few students in our residential programs whose sessions were still incomplete right so we had made that plan and as soon as it was announced that we have to vacate campuses we because we already had worked on it we went live within a week and but the biggest challenge for us has been you know in terms of getting the faculty even though our faculty have you know and not just in our institutes other institutes they have been used to teaching in virtual platforms getting them to suddenly shift a course midway from a res from a physical classroom to a online classroom has been one of the biggest challenges which has been there for faculty so the way you guys are dealing you know industry is dealing with you know uh, grappling with how we change the working the ways of working even in academics the way we are teaching the way we are working right has been going through a bit of an upheaval okay now even internally it's been a challenge to motivate and keep employees engaged because with work from home okay it's you have to find a way to you know ensure that everyone is doing their bit because unlike other industries in academics a lot of work is actually done physically in the premises so we have been making massive use of technology to coordinate with the uh, teams we have you know twice a week meetings regular meetings all of that virtually and we ensure that we are trying to ensure that you know things go as smooth as possible but what we have also seen is that there is a bit of you know uncertainty among students in terms of what should we be doing at this stage with our education our career should we go ahead with the with upskilling should we hold on right and in fact we if you look at it many of the students of my virtual programs which are there for working executives they are coming back to us and saying that you know because of work from home the stress levels are very high so it's impacting our continuing education as well now this is where it's going to be a test of the metal of you know individual professionals how they are able to handle this elevated level of stress so the way i see it you know the ones who will be able to manage this level of stress successfully will probably come out you know in a better position to shape their careers subsequently now uh i would like to just pass it on to neeru and sandeep for you know their views on the other topic before i say a few more things sure great uh, thank you uh, professor so great so uh, so one of the things that uh, i think we all realize is that probably because of uh, consumer behavior being uh, changed the way work is getting executed on the mm -hmm. ground uh, uh, and and sandeep mentioned uh, about sales as a function probably uh, the way sales is getting done uh, currently that is uh, going to undergo quite a dramatic uh, change and probably that's going to continue even in uh, uh, you know once business comes back to whatever that new normal is 
So let me ask uh, uh, Niru and Sandeep in terms of what are some of the skills that you feel are going to be very critical uh, for professionals to have across and, and, and you can structure your question in terms of different functions, different industries, whichever way you want to structure your, but some of the skills that you think are going to be pretty critical for you as an organization for professionals to succeed in your industry per se. Uh, so Niru, your thoughts uh, are on that particular uh, area. You know, um, so so sometimes, you know, I feel that, you know, current times or, you know, not the current times, some of the skills are, are pretty uh, important, you know, especially when I look at IT industry or even other, some of the other industries, but IT in more specific, we, we def, you know, uh, it's, it's, of course, you know, you have to be a, a, a good developer, you have to be a good coder, you have to be good on the engineering side. That's a, that's a given. You know, it, it's sort of with that given what really, you know, makes, uh, helps you succeed better, you know, especially given the current times and all is really, uh, you know, a, a sort of a global, you know, if I were to say a global fluency and perspective, you know, and, and being able to communicate across borders, you know, you know, you know, you know, right now, especially when you anyways do that, you know, but you travel a lot of times, but in these times, almost all our people are, are communicating with the screens. Right. And in that, how do you manage the, the softer side of the communication? How do you understand the people across borders better? So I think I, I'll focus a little more on the on the softer side of skills, which is which is very, very important. And, you know, yeah, some of our learning is is focused on in that direction as well. That's that's one bit. Uh, you know, if you were reading the newspapers with the TCS announcing 75 percent workforce, you know, by 2025 to go uh, to be working from home. Now the biggest hindrance to that could be are people savvy enough to do the same, you know, be at the same level of productivity in this mode. So how do we prep them for an environment which is so virtual? There are things that will come into play. You know, how do you keep them, uh, uh, you know, the psychologically or emotionally engaged? So I think uh, one one part I would say is for people to uh, be uh, more, uh, you know, globally fluent, uh, have a global mindset. Uh, uh, and and uh, you know of course some some bit of uh, emotional intelligence, cognitive flexibility, some of those things that come mm -hmm. to my mind that become even more relevant in and this time when they will be really you know they will not be having a face to face interaction. It will be a virtual face to face. So in that uh, in with that, how do you develop the apps which are meant for a you know a, a, like millions of users? How do you still you know become user centric? You know, because user centricity will be very important when we design the products that we design. So, so I see that those kind of training needs and skilling needs will really see a big upside other than, of course, you know, the, the technology or the technical skilling that we do. I know if that answers, you know, if, if that gives you a perspective, Prashant, but I think it'll be a multitude of things that, you know, if I look at just the current times uh, that we'll have to focus on. I think, uh, yours is a fairly sales driven organization. Uh, how has that function being important uh, sort of impacted? And in the days to come, how do you see that function? And, and, and if somebody's expected to now be an effective salesperson, uh, you know, in the post COVID area, what are some of the skills that you feel are going to be relevant for people to succeed? How, how have you seen that? And what are some of your realizations uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, four to six weeks? Uh, there was a voice distortion. You're referring to the sales function, right? Yes, I'm. I'm just picking up sales as a function as an example. So you know, if you pick up sales as a function, and so what are some of the skills that would be? So there's this traditional times when you did sales, you picked up a bag and landed up at a prospect's, you know, a, a, a house and had a conversation. Probably the rules of the game are going to change. So what are some? Are there some new skills in terms of? Uh, uh, the sales function in totality will need to acquire if they need to be effective in the days to come. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in this changing environment, uh, as Neeru pointed out, uh, customer centricity will have a paradigm shift. Um, because customer, uh, let's look into uh, what is the demand which is coming and that's where uh, we are there to fulfill that demand. Uh, Demand for insurance or uh, financial products in general 
is low other than the ones which are high yield investment products uh this is more to do with safety probably with this entire thing there would be some more awareness about what are the things which how you can safeguard yourself and your family uh, from this so given that as a as a backdrop uh, what we are looking uh, uh, what we are looking into it is that how how do we equip our own people to get into more empathetic selling because more we connect with people on with their concerns rather than be a push rather than how do you can be more empathetic how can our product go through a different kind of a transformation and and uh, more uh, user friendly is is my so it is more looking inwards than outwards at this point in time it's saying that okay what we were doing till yesterday may not be that relevant today so now what are the things which are relevant what do we see how 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 is the customer behavior changing how there is a uh, there is a huge amount there is a, no lending that means uh, there is an economy which is also getting into a little bit of a uh, huge amount of slowdown so how does this all these uh, things impact and within that what is the value we are bringing in in terms of uh, if we are uh, going out in the market and selling and uh, and um, giving a is there a value proposition properly uh, articulated or not are my guys properly trained on uh, on the products etc or not earlier if i am not able to close the sale i will take my manager or the uh, and and then the senior manager or whatever means whatever it was there it was more on a physical level right now it is all on a virtual level so it is we are focusing at present largely on on developing and upskilling themselves on various aspects of insur insurance and financial domain as such so we are looking at uh, and, and how do we equip them uh, to a better uh, more empathetic uh, sales person rather than a push uh, kind of a scenario thanks thanks sandeep uh, coming to you professor uh, what's your take in terms of the skills that are going to be relevant and probably that will also be relevant uh, in terms of the way you will be designing your courses. Uh, so where do you think the demand coming in? What will people come, professionals come? What will corporates come and tell you, hey, I need my people to be reskilled in this particular area and hence I need uh, programs in this particular area. So what, what's your take? Do you have a point of view? I'm sure you have, uh, you know, your view in terms of what exactly would be uh, in demand skills, so to say. Yeah, so if you look at the buckets of competencies, right, what's going yeah. to change is the, you know, if you, I can, you can uh, classify the competencies into two broad buckets. One is the behavioral, one is the technical, right? That's the knowledge part to do your role. In terms of the behavioral bucket, right, if you look at it, the same, there is one part which will probably not change which is in terms of the leadership skills, et cetera, right? The communication part, what will probably change, most likely change is how we do it. So it's not the competency itself, which is going to change or the set of competencies will most likely remain the same. Over the last decade, agility, flexibility, ability to manage stress have become well accepted competencies, right? But with the, in the post-COVID scenario, these are probably going to become far more important from the behavioral side. So that's one side. On the technical side, okay, uh, there's a saying which we have in you know uh, our financial crisis, uh, uh, you know, research. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Invariably, yeah. you find that every crisis is yeah. the same. <laughs> But this is not a financial crisis it's a very different crisis what's going to happen is that you know with here what's going to there is going to be not a change in the what there's going to be a change in the how to a large extent right so organizations which were if you look at it right now they will continue doing the bread and butter functions of logistics supply chain managing their operations managing the sales force etc but what's going to probably come in is the integration of newer technologies and newer ways of doing this so for instance in india we still have not gone that far ahead in you know the adoption of data for decision making right we are still in the very nascent stages as compared to the developed countries. But that's probably going to change, especially once you know you have people who are distributed. Because when 
your workforce is together right working in one location or working as a team right physically there's a lot of implicit knowledge that gets shared which helps you in your decision making the moment you get to a say a work from home or you know a distancing kind where that interpersonal bonding doesn't happen then you have to rely more on you know data driven decision making and i think that's going to be one big change in the future right and if you look at it even newer technologies that will mean you know life easier like say blockchain so so the way supply chains are going to be managed is going to change drastically the business models of e-commerce is going to change right so that's these are areas which i see as coming here but on the other side something interesting that's going to come out is also the ability of managers and organizations to transform their organization not just strategically right from a overall cultural point of view and so on so if you look at it these are some of the key areas which i think that's going to happen and more importantly our conception of what we mean as productivity how we measure it has to undergo a radical change because with people working from home right with decisions being quite interpersonal uh, quite impersonal rather okay which is bound to happen if for example if tcs does 25% work from home right it will be a bit impersonal how do you ensure that employees identify themselves with the organization that will be a newer set of challenge for hr professionals right so motivating employees making them feel as if they are a part of the organization right how do you ensure that you know hr managers also right ensure that there are there is you know not enough that you manage the stress adequately right all of these are basically the areas which i think where people will have to organize in some cases individuals will have to work on skilling themselves as i said in terms of the new technologies in some cases the organizations will have to invest in you know creating that culture developing their leadership team to handle the you know post covid scenario so i think that way there is going to be a demand or a requirement for upskilling and reskilling on both fronts behavioral competencies technical competencies right but that's the basic thing that i see so going forward i would rather say areas like analytics data driven decision making right mm. maybe if things go worse then organizations might have to think about how they you know are able to restructure their organizations and so on these will become key areas in the future so that's the current take that we are having thanks uh, thank you professor okay one of the things that again when i talk to a lot of leadership teams across industries is that everybody uh, the common uh, uh, refrain is that uh, uh, you know every industry was going through a digital transformation exercise uh, per se but now because of the covid scenario probably that transformation has to be accelerated it's now thrust upon them more strongly per se now they don't have the luxury of sitting back and 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 when waiting for this transformation to happen because now it's more or less thrust upon them and it has to be you know probably accelerated now in that context everybody is talking about the investments that they would need to make in every function every industry is talking about on technology per se uh, in that context and and probably i'll go one by one and pick up all your thoughts uh, everybody's thoughts in terms of uh where do you see uh demand coming in purely from a uh from a recruitment point of view from a skills perspective uh, because the conversation in terms of investments on uh, automation on robotics if it's a manufacturing company on ai on big data any function any industry everybody's talking about that so so when you talk to your your own businesses uh, uh business uh, functions uh, in your industries per se where exactly do you think 
uh, the demand is going to come in in the days to come what sort of skills would you need to hire for uh, because a lot of skills everybody again a lot of leadership teams are saying that it's not readily available readily available within the organizations per se so what are some of the skills that you need to hire and and get from outside especially in the technology uh, uh, related uh, spaces automation uh, related spaces uh, niru uh, sandeep and then i'll i'll come and pick up uh, uh, professor your thoughts too so niru can we start with you yeah so um, you know uh, it's it's been quite interesting to see uh, the the new normal shaping up for the industry and and you know we can just start with examples we see right there in front of us you know how the relevance of brick and mortar you know versus others is is sort of adjusting a new balance is getting created right now uh you know the way some of the industry segments have i wouldn't say benefited but are sort of move, you know still in a positive direction right now look at amazon look at flipkart look at you know look at all of these e-commerce companies they they already were there and and for now they're they're really like like their digital transformation journey will see a big upsurge even you know they were already in that direction it strengthens the whole journey so so you know uh, so those segments will will i feel will see a big big uh, upside in in this whole space and if i have to relate that to my own organization i think our focus on on such verticals will go up because you know we are in the business of digital transformation uh and if if the business moves in that direction because this could truly lead to some of the industry segments are uh, focusing heavily you know some of the examples i just shared uh and 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 uh, you know if if 60% of our employees you know and we used to do always the skill analysis you know so so between vanilla skills you know of of uh, of java and and then going to some niche skills and then you know really digital skills which is a combination of certain skill you know tech, technology skills area skill areas you know if it was 60% uh, till last year i see that you know this year we'll see a shift in that you know as as we get out of course you know i think there'll be a pause of 3 to 6 months situations get better and then the new normal the new vertical focus and the transformation journey we may just get into you know our our overall skill portfolio might just see a big shift is something you know that we we clearly see happening uh in fact some of our you know uh, the the architects or or the thought leaders you know our ctos and all are really really betting high on the positive side of this transformation right now so if were you were to go to our blogs and things that i'm reading from our own uh, you know uh, in specialists you know it, it is a time which is you know to wait watch and focus uh is is how but yeah, yes you know whatever we are uh, the skill base that we have it'll undergo a big shift Thanks, Niru. Okay, so Sunny, before I come to you, uh, just a quick announcement to all the attendees. Uh, already, there are a lot of questions that have come, uh, but in case uh, you know you have any questions, because last 15 minutes we'll focus on questions and we'll try and take up as many questions as possible. So there's a questions tab there. Just press there, type in your questions, and uh, uh, whatever time that we have uh, towards the last 15 minutes of the conversation, uh, we'll pick those questions uh, up. Uh, yeah, Sandeep, coming to you. Uh, you know, uh, because of the whole digital transformation, what do you think you need to go out in the market and hire from outside? What sort of new skills uh, you need to uh, uh, get from outside? Uh, so, given given the current context, a uh, lot of emphasis is on analytics uh, as one area. Secondly, uh, yes, uh, process automation, pro basically process champion people who understand in and out of the process. A particular particular segment of process and uh, who ex who has absolute expertise in those areas so those are the uh, those are the special uh, we will pick up a specialized skills largely and uh, skills which which will um, help and complement the sales force on the ground uh, which is largely in, uh, in today's time it is digitally present uh, so these are these uh, some of the areas which we will focus we will definitely focus a lot more on um, analytics uh, than we are looking at um, AI, AI-driven decision making or AI-driven uh, uh, evolution of products, uh, then uh, then artificial intelligence and and so and so forth. So largely uh, data and data-driven um, uh, models and and uh, decision making is one thing which is which is where the organization is tilting towards at this point in time. And um, this is an industry which is it which is has 
largely depend on all the other uh, financial tools which are uh, available like uh, banking it has a huge dependency on banking if if that industry is doing well or not well then uh, we will definitely suffer so that's why uh, some of the areas where we need to also separate ourselves from uh, the, uh, the uh, from a dependency uh, point of view from from the uh, banking and other financial institutions will also have to be viewed no, so, adding all all those, uh, point. sorry Sorry, Sandeep, I was just adding to your banking point. I think adding to your point, a lot of weaknesses also will get exposed in this time. You know, things that we know are gap areas, uh, you know, are, are will come forth and those will become the addressable market segments from a digital, you know, transformation standpoint. And more so, uh, customer themselves have moved into this platform. And if you are not present there, then uh, there's no point. Your existing, uh, existence itself is, is been in uh, question mark. So yeah. that's that's one of the aspects which is there. But then again, uh, it all is the core industry has to kick in, and we can have all the plans, we can have all those things, unless the core industries, which these uh, uh, our industry or our IT industry or any other industry supports, uh, will will have a tough time to survive by themselves. Unless the core industries like your infra and and uh, steel and manufacturing, etc., if that doesn't kick in, uh, then it's it's we all will see some difficult times. Okay, so Professor, coming to you and and also begin up your thoughts in terms of the how part. You mentioned the what is probably not going to change the how part. So picking up your thoughts on that part, uh, what's your message to you know professionals, especially mid career professionals, in terms of uh, uh, the investment that they need to make, the way they need to look relook at themselves and reevaluate. Uh, themselves from a relevance point of view. What do they need to do uh, uh, to stay relevant in terms of and 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 where would uh, it be that time is spent well uh, from a reskilling uh, perspective? What's your take and message on on that particular part? So Sandeep and uh, Niru have clearly pointed out right that at this point of time the ability to you know handle analytics right or handle data artificial intelligence support decision making maybe using blockchains etc all of that are going to be critical at this moment of time right plus you know how do we understand and manage projects and processes in organizations because digital transformation projects, which organizations will take up, will be of a very different scale and you know nature as compared to what's been going on. So even the way we manage projects probably will have to take a relook. Will have to be relooked at. But that's one area where people definitely need to build their skills on. Now, uh, if you look at it, I would say that we have achieved in the last 20 years because if you 20 years ago if you or if you look at our the generation of our parents right it was what you do a education at one go finish it and then never go back to education right because things yeah, were yeah. Quite, in today's world industry is you know changing rapidly you have newer technologies newer ways of doing things and coming up every few years and disrupting the market not to mention you know uh, external events like this right now in this case at this point of time one has to understand that learning has to change from a one-time learning to a lifetime learning model. and you have to plan for you know different stages of your career what you're looking at for yourself and accordingly build a portfolio of skills and competencies, both on behavioral and technical side. The ones who will come out, right, and thrive in their career are those who will have multi-focused skills, right? Not just the, not pure specialist. So if you actually have one skill, right, like say Java coding, for example, you might just get obsolete, right? So it's so if you're thinking about your skills, you have to keep reassessing your career objectives every three to five years and 
also take a look at what's happening in the industry at that point of time and see which part of your portfolio of skills needs updating so as we say in finance diversification is the best strategy with your skills right that is also the best strategy given the uh, future and the way industry is shaping up so even skills related to industry 4.0 for example right we talk about automation robotics right but how do you manage teams of people right who will you know uh, handle these or handle the machines right that is one other issue right so how do you measure product how do you evaluate productivity i keep emphasizing productivity because this is going to be the biggest challenge within the next couple of years right so overall i see that you know it's more going to be data driven at this moment in and but obviously the functional areas uh, or the function the functional domains will you know that basic knowledge will still remain so that is what i have to say right okay great thank you i think uh, we are the last 15 minutes and and i have been bombarded with a lot of questions so let me pick up a few and uh, sort of uh, pick up your thoughts uh, okay so okay so uh, and there are a lot of questions on recruitment so let me pick up one question uh, and then and, and, and probably it will cover a lot of questions which are similar in themes and this question is coming from uh, shweta sitaraman uh, British Deputy High Commission from uh, British Deputy High Commission and the question is which industries will be recruiting more in the coming months and uh, her follow up question is will back end support function still be important uh, so Sandeep Nero uh, probably will go to Sandeep first uh, uh, and pick up his thoughts and then probably Nero you could add if you have any uh, uh, you know additional thoughts on that so which industries will be recruiting more in coming months and uh, relevance of support functions uh, in days to come. Uh, I'll start with the second half first, and then I'll uh, come to the first half. Uh, sub functions are more relevant in today's time than ever before. Uh, yes, uh, we have most of the organization has nearly about 25 to 30 percent of, of the organization, which is actually supporting the front end team. Uh, for for us, uh, it is in today's time, it is the most all the functions have become extremely critical. Because they are the backbone of the uh, of the entire ecosystem. How they are, uh, for example, if I take an example of uh, insurance industry, uh, so there is a sale which happens, and then from then on, it is the entire chain and the life cycle of that particular journey of that person for a year is been man managed largely by the support function. So uh, their relevance in today's time is even uh, more important. Second, they they are. Uh, they have to innovate they have to move towards 100 uh, percent as much as possible digitally because uh, that enhances their speed uh, enhances their uh, capability to deliver uh, customer fast, uh, faster and better third is uh, we this space also needs a lot of uh, grooming because uh, you uh, most of the servicing of customer used to happen in branches and and and, and offices so that has moved to move to more of a telecalling or a video conferencing so definitely there is uh, there is a uh, there is a development need which is there at this point in time a change of um, approach so that is another thing uh, that's another thing which is going to happen uh, for as a professor also uh, Santosh also mentioned and Nero also mentioned about digital uh, AI so based on uh, this data which comes in uh, there have to be uh, there will be uh, or rather organizations are building a complete digital capability or AI and uh, AI driven decision making and, and servicing so these are the three things uh, uh, which are happening on the back end and hence these are the places where the job need uh, there will be a requirement for people uh, there will be expansion in business but the only thing is that this headcount will always uh, may they uh, organization may look at uh, currently if it is at 25 percent to uh, to rest of the organization may look at say uh, bringing it down to 20 to 23 not by cutting in people but adding more people on the front end so ratio will will shift but uh, these these jobs are important and are very very relevant at this point in time because now if sale is not happening but uh, your customer your commitment to uh, serve, service that particular uh, 
uh, that particular product or a services which we have sold is still there so that has to be serviced and and that's what this team does and coming back to jobs uh, which are the industries uh, in i will rather uh, uh focus upon what are the skills uh, which will have much better chances one is um, if you are a good uh, a digital evangelist kind of a profile yes second is uh, the one which is which will happen is a more project based work which is going to come up which is a gig economy and uh, more and more organization will uh, look at uh, reducing their um, headcount and uh, and the expenses related to having a fixed headcount and moving into these uh, niche kind of segments so i would see rather uh, more push towards entrepreneurship will be one one uh, direction i see in this segment smaller ones two three people coming together and developing a product or a service which is uh, probably a world class yeah i it's difficult for me to predict at this point in time which industry will have which will not sorry i don't have that kind of insight yet as yet but yes a uh, couple of industries which will uh, recover faster is uh, pharma uh, your uh, food and food yeah so uh, pharma food supply chain uh, digit uh, yeah. health well being uh, which is uh, driven and uh, and distributed digitally will be high there would be high consumption because you are con you are confined to a particular place and you will um, if you don't keep yourself uh, active there are health issues which will come up so obviously uh, that is another segment which will uh, do well a uh, lot of um, areas in um, for example if you look into uh, farming uh, that's another area which i i see uh, that's an area which we all need food and and I, more so with in this entire thing we are pushing towards more um, say organic and 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 healthy uh, living and food options so this is another area which will uh, pick up fast uh, at this point in time pollution rates are less uh, probably will have better uh, better e from the fields and 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 i am just uh, i'm looking at i'm just looking at the data and uh, trying to analyze it and these are the segments which which are roti kapda makan are the base, basic things in that makan you leave it aside roti and kapda are still a need so these are the things which will uh, anything associated with these two roti kapda makan mein sehat add kar lete hain usme sehat bahut yeah. important rehne wali hai yeah well being yes well being yeah, well being well absolutely we will see uh, so neither uh, entrepreneurs in that side yeah so neeru coming uh, you picking your thoughts in terms of if you have a point of view around the industries and i'll just add on to that uh, because uh, sandeep mentioned uh, about gig uh, 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 workforce and there's a question here about that so i'll read that out and if you have a point of view you can add on to that uh, this question is coming from sankalp nanda from harpa life international and the question is will we find a rise in gig workforce considering the way we are working Uh, is expected to change now significantly you know um, i i think so because if you go by the statistics of the gig workforce even before covid times india does contribute a lot and i think this time like you know it is forcing everybody to think differently organizations to you know figure out different ways of managing people hiring people onboarding people having people on projects cost efficiencies i think it will further pick up the gig economy so it's any it was anyways something that was you know when whenever we spoke okay. spoke about the you know the future of work the 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 future of how work will be delivered done uh, so this is this was bound to happen maybe the pace gets accelerated it is how i see it okay. the second industries there are still companies which are hiring i keep following that there are websites around that so again you know from a business standpoint i do see edtech medtech uh other e-commerce companies so a lot of those uh, you know will will definitely see a upsurge i mean you know look at the way the licenses of uh, microsoft teams has gone up like all the schools have adopted you know that that though that platform overnight and and many other platforms you know so to say so you know we will see that surge in 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 the work that will happen in these industries and it's quite interesting you know to to see and be part of that uh another interesting term i keep hearing is these lot of people you know there are digital natives like people like us who work with product engineering organizations and then there are digital refugees so there are a lot of work that will happen around 
people who were you know really not in so much touch so how do they get in touch you know a lot of applications will get developed to ease out that whole piece plus uh, you know i, I mean i'm in mean, uh, you know some of the companies that have survived and thrived these times you know the big baskets and milk baskets and you know it comes under roti kapda makan uh, analogy but yes i think those segments usme education bhi add kar sakte hain so so i think all of that is is somewhere where i see hiring happen you know so right yeah. now also if you go yeah. and check by Bai, juice is hiring right now uh, you know I, and i'm yeah. sure Prof, professor sangam can give us more insight into into the you know in um, education space but i feel that is picking up in a big way okay so here i come to you professor there's a question from a fellow professional of yours and this question is coming from dr shushmita from asia pacific institute of management and her question is very uh, similar to what we probably were discussing before the webinar started how does a management institution handle internships evaluations preparation for placements in times like these <laughs> okay uh that's a very difficult question to answer to be honest yeah but yeah. the way we have if you look at it internships you need to have a backup in the sense that either you know uh, some companies uh, you'll find that some companies may not honor the internships so you need to have a backup with some companies with whom you have good relations to pick up the others who do who have not been placed right or you need to be able to figure out some kind of internship projects so if you look at it the government is also government aict they have come up with many internship projects so that's where uh, where students can actually take them up in lieu of their normal internship so that's the route many education institutes are taking now uh, you know coming to the other part the uh, the topic where the question about which question which sandeep was talking about right uh, there is going to if you look at it mm, the industries right if, uh, which will benefit you'll have to look at it in terms of short term medium term long term okay probably in the short term these e-commerce businesses you know which are focusing on the food supply chain the essentials they will probably end up doing well right suddenly you see a spurt in the business of organization like farm easy one md dot com and so on right so in the short to medium to short term you might probably see these guys hiring more okay in the medium term you will probably see a shift where organizations may you know once they find some semblance of you know sanity going on right once the situation becomes a bit safe they may actually reorganize or reprioritize what they are going to hire for okay so as we were talking about these digital skills the data skills those are going to probably be more critical for hiring in the middle medium term over the long term yeah right once the other rest of the industry picks up right so by long term i'm talking about at least a couple of years ahead right over the long term probably things will go back to again you know a whole new set of skills wherein you will have to look at where companies will start getting a bit more comfortable then they'll start looking for people who will now be able to also manage these functions right because the skills to manage an analytics function or an analytics team is a very different skill set because especially because most of most people we have seen are not used to are not used to the language of data scientists uh, data science is more of a younger gen quote unquote younger generation language right okay. senior managers need to actually think of how right they need to skill in terms of how do we manage i think that will be the focus going forward right now as regards educational institutes coming back to that question internship that's one way you are handling it uh going online right to complete your syllabus and all sounds very easy to say but it's very difficult for institutions which have 
actually not had that experience because it requires a complete change in the mindset of the faculty right more and other thing which probably might one you know fails to realize is that a topic which might take one hour in a physical classroom will take much longer in a virtual classroom because you have to do put in that much more effort to make it more engaging right so overall if you talk about how it's impacting education that's a separate topic altogether let's see yeah. right so the yeah, kind of yeah, challenge yeah. you're facing is uh, humongous yeah. Yeah, but you know it's a challenge and it's Great. also an opportunity i'm seeing you know uh and and i was hearing the principal of this school in delhi talk about the return to school strategy and mm. and and you know she was really talking about creating zones in the school uh you know calling half the grades on one week half the grades on other week so this digital savviness will actually help them now to get through that whole phase you know it's a different conversation you know the things kind of things that we discuss at work in companies is what is happening in school with kids yes in fact uh, there will be much greater use of technology even at school level now okay so some so what will happen is going forward you know this generation will have when they reach their mid careers or late careers they will actually have to deal with a bunch of fresh guys who have come out who are very well versed with technology and very comfortable yeah right so all the more reason for them to ensure that they keep updated yeah. <laughs> yeah. right that's a good point yeah right. very so very thank you for the whole big bunch which will by the time they graduate they will be extremely tech savvy they'll be dig experts you know digital experts or whatever yeah, yeah. and you'll have to manage <laughs> i think that's yeah that's the the good part of generations different generations coming into the workforce they come with something that they have acquired as part of their upbringing which challenges the generation which is already there so yeah. that's a great point uh, and that brings us to the end i mean there are still a lot of questions that have have not been able to pick up but obviously uh, you know we need to be conscious of time uh, what we'll do is we'll write back to the uh to the individuals who have uh, uh, given uh, us those questions we'll reach out to you uh, professor sandeep and uh, niru uh, uh, with those questions get your responses on to them and mail it back uh, to uh, to everybody who's asked those questions i once again thank you uh, for uh, taking time out and having this conversation because it's a very relevant uh, dialogue internally in every professional that i speak to in terms of what do i need to do to stay relevant so uh, thank you for taking time out once again uh, i also thank uh, uh, partners talentage for coming on board uh, for this uh, for setting up this entire webinar i hope uh, it was time well spent for everybody who, who took time out and logged on to this entire conversation and till we meet again uh, take care uh, convey my best regards uh, to everybody in your ecosystem and stay safe stay healthy bye everyone Thank you, Prashant. Thank bye. you, Professor. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Neeru. So, bye and be safe. Yeah. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.